welcome to Urban Knife Guy, where we explore the urban lifestyle and jungle survival. Today we're going to have a look at a traditional French folding knife. This is the Latier by O Sabot. This is not a new knife, I'm helping someone sharpen it, and I'm also going to perform some maintenance so it looks less worn out. So I'll first explore the knife and then we'll get to work. If you watch this channel regularly but have not subscribed, please do so to help the channel out. Thanks. Created in 1870, Eau Sabot is one of the oldest French cutlery brands. Headquarters in Thiers, the capital of the French knife-making industry, Eau Sabot produces a wide range of knives in the finest French tradition. Eau Sabot is famous for its regional and folding knives, and this knife, the Le Thiers, is named after the town of Thiers. This logo certifies that the knife has been produced by La Cutlerie Eau Sabot. I'm sure I'm butchering that, so I apologize for that. This is called the traditional model and it has a bolster to protect the handle. It is a slip joint and it's got a pretty strong back spring, but I'm not sure if it's just due to the grime and the buildup of dirt in the knife. I cannot be sure, but I believe the wood on the handle is birch wood based on the images I've seen online. Now this knife retails for new at 79 euros or around US $86. So the knife itself is a very classic French design and I actually like this because a lot of the French knives tend to have this very tapered tail which I don't really like so much and that's a very classic design. So this I thought was actually pretty nice. It's also got this etching and I believe these are all handmade in terms of uh, putting a design on that uh, kind of a back spring here and that always uh, gives nice design. Now for the more expensive knives, you get really intricate detail. This is actually uh, quite simple and basic. Uh, but based on the price of the knife, I would expect that as well. In terms of the fit and finish, it is not bad. Everything's quite flush. No major gaps in the spacer, except maybe here. This doesn't seem that flush, but let's see if we open it up. So that pushes up and that, yeah, that is more flush. So in the open position, this is pretty flush. Now, but generally fit and finish is not bad. As you can see, this knife is uh, quite used. There is a bit of rust all over the place, even though this is stainless steel. Uh, the insides also, there's a buildup of rust and dirt, and that definitely needs to be cleaned out. The blade itself, it's not sharp. Okay, kids don't do this at home, but uh, this is not sharp at all. I will have to sharpen it. Well, let's talk about some specifications of the knife. The blade length is 10cm long, but the cutting length is 8.5cm long. The closed length is 12cm, and the overall length is 21cm. The weight of the knife is 88 grams, so it's pretty light. The blade style, well, it's a straight back, and the grind, that's just a flat grind. The blade steel is 12C27. You can see that right over there. Now, 12C27 steel is part of the Sandvik family. It is a low-end high chromium steel that is well liked in the knife industry because it provides outstanding wear resistance, corrosion resistance, and high hardness qualities that make a great knife. Now this is a pretty common steel in Europe and even though the stainless steel you can see if you do not take care of it, it still can rust. So stainless steel doesn't mean it will never rust. Additionally, 12C20C steel is relatively easy to sharpen unlike other chromium steels that take a long time due to the tough chromium carbides. Now that we have looked at the knife, I'm going to work on it to clean it, polish it and sharpen it. Before I do that, I thought I'll show you some of the equipment that I'll be using. For cleaning, I've got a rust pad, some cleaning cloth, earbuds, a toothbrush, as well as some water and some compressed gas to reach the very insides of the knife. For sharpening, I've got these water stones. They are corundum stones made from aluminum oxide, so they're synthetic stones. And these are actually really budget stones. They're cheap stones that you can get online, and they really vary in price, so you want to get the cheapest price 
possible. Uh, now, I do have Japanese king stones, but because this steel is actually quite easy to sharpen, I wanted to show that it's possible to use these stones to really get a sharp edge. Now, the criticism of these stones is they are not well put together, so they don't last long. They will dip over time, and you have to flatten them out, and you get a lot of mess uh, just due to the abrasiveness coming out as you sharpen. Now, those things are all true, but they're very inexpensive. And I wanted to show that you can use these inexpensive stones to sharpen a knife depending on the steel. I've also got this 800 grit uh, diamond plate, which I'll be using initially. Then I'll move on to 1,000, 3,000, and the 8,000 for the stones. And finally, to finish, I will be using this leather strop and compound to really just take out those micro burrs. To finish the knife, I've got some metal polish, some boiled linseed oil for the handle, and then knife oil for the joints and for the blade itself. As I work, and since I am in an enclosed environment, I'll be wearing a mask to filter out dust and metal particles, and I'll also have on a pair of goggles. Okay, let's get started. And here we have the finished knife. I'm not sure how well this shows up on camera, but it's definitely way cleaner. Uh, really kind of got rid of all the rust or as much as I could polished it up. Now this is a satin finish, so you will not get that kind of a reflective mirror finish. Uh, but everything I think uh, looks really nice. The handles have been oiled, dried and oiled. So did that twice. And in terms of the Slip joint, you can see that's still a nice big snap, but no more grating when I open this up. I cleaned it as much as I could. Now, I can't open up the scales because uh, this, these are pins. I did try to clean off the rust on this uh, back spring over here as much as I could. So it really helps uh, oil it as well. So while it's still a bit stiff, it definitely is better than before. And let's check out how sharp this is. Let's try a paper cut test. So that's pretty slicey, pretty sharp. Well, there you have it. I have refurbished this particular the tier knife. Uh, what do you think of the knife itself? Do you like these traditional French knives? I personally think it's quite pretty. I do intend to get one in the future. The only French knife I have now is the Openel 8 in the limited edition Black Palm Wood Edition. I do intend to get one of these sort of knives in the future. Uh, haven't decided which one just yet. I have my eye on a few and uh, I do hope to get one. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you own any 
any traditional French knives? And if you do, which one would you recommend? Do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like the content in general, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.